Hello, and welcome to the next installment of the Teaching the Curriculum Through Food video series with Farm to Cafeteria Canada and Growing Chefs Ontario. In this video, we'll explore food literacy, what it is, and opportunities to connect it with the curriculum from kindergarten to grade eight. Using food can be a really fun and effective tool to teach a variety of subject matter while developing food skills and food literacy at the same time. This video will explore how and where food literacy naturally overlaps with the school curriculum. But first, before we start, it's important to understand why food literacy is important. There's quite a bit of research that promotes the importance of food literacy. Here, we're going to cite just a few examples. The first is from a research article from November of 2019 from the National Assembly of Sciences, USA. Dietary choices are a leading global cause of mortality and environmental degradation. We find that foods associated with improved adult health also often have low environmental impacts, indicating that the same dietary transitions that would lower instances of non-communicable diseases would also help meet environmental sustainability targets. The second is from a Conference Board of Canada report from 2017 entitled Improving Food Literacy in Canada. It states, improving food literacy in Canada will support better choices in diet, nutrition, food attitudes, and food skills leading to improved health and safety. In addition, improved food literacy will positively impact environmental sustainability. Globally, nationally, provincially, and locally, you will find the same recommended action again and again. Expand food literacy and food education programs for all children and youth. So, what exactly is food literacy then? Food literacy doesn't have a specific definition that is widely accepted at the national level. Some regions have their own versions of an official food literacy definition, whereas other provinces do not. Regardless of where you are in the country, we recommend looking to see if your province or regional health authority has a generally accepted definition of food literacy for your reference. As highlighted in this definition of food literacy from Canada's Food Guide, food literacy includes food skills and the broader environmental context. For a more in-depth understanding, we look to this definition from the Canadian Journal of Dietetic Practice and Research, which talks about the ability to engage in and navigate within a complex food system while considering environmental, social, economic, cultural, and political components. That said, essentially all definitions of food literacy are similar and will include a variation of interconnected characteristics or facets relating to food and nutrition knowledge, understanding what is in different types of foods and what foods are nutritious, concepts related to health, as well as dietary guidelines and recommendations. Food skills and cooking skills, and then a person's ability to put their skills and knowledge into action or to make good knowledgeable food decisions, sometimes also referred to as self-efficacy and confidence. Food attitudes, meaning does a person want to make healthy food decisions? Do they believe that nutritious food can actually be delicious? An understanding of food systems, meaning where our food comes from, how it gets from where it is grown, raised, and produced to our plates, the role people play in feeding the population, and the environmental impact that food systems have on our planet. Some definitions of food literacy also cover how other external factors, including how social determinants of health and socio-cultural influences and eating practices can influence and affect a person's ability to make food choices. So, how does food literacy complement the curriculum? Children will already have opportunities to develop some aspects of food literacy through traditional nutrition topics and health classes in school. But although food and nutrition knowledge is an incredibly important part of food literacy, there's so much more to the bigger picture. Through other subjects, we can find opportunities to build food literacy where there is a natural overlap in the curriculum. Here are some, but certainly not all, examples of food literacy and curriculum overlap. In math, measuring ingredients, understanding ratios, sequencing and fractions are such a big part of what cooking and following a recipe actually is. Baking of any kind requires precise measurements. You often have to convert measurements to pounds versus ounces, cups versus liters, and all of this is needed to develop food and cooking skills. Adjusting, calculating portion sizes, scaling, multiplying and dividing recipes helps to build self-confidence and is essential in making good food decisions. 
Food budgeting for at home or menu costing, if using a restaurant example, not only develops food skills, but builds confidence and self-efficacy as well. Growing a few lettuces, herbs or beans in a windowsill garden, or if you have it, a school or class garden, can provide opportunities to estimate how big and fast the plants will grow, and then measure and graph the results versus the predictions, which can help familiarize children with how our food grows. Much of nutrition knowledge is based on being able to calculate portion sizes and understand nutrition labels, which both rely on basic applied math skills. In literacy, when following a recipe, understanding directions and following the instructions in sequential order is part of developing food skills. Understanding food language or terminology, especially in culinary terms, for example, chopping versus dicing versus mincing, or rolling boil versus simmering, is necessary in food skills and self-efficacy and confidence. Understanding food media and marketing and how advertising can influence and manipulate food trends as well as our own personal food choices is incredibly important in making good dietary decisions. And how we use language when talking about food, especially when helping children approach new foods and become comfortable with trying new things, is incredibly important in developing good food attitudes. Using creative writing to write about food, for example, writing food reviews, helps develop language to describe taste, texture, appearance, and the experience of tasting and trying new foods. In science, just a few examples, cooking with heat, combining liquids, creating emulsifications, anything to do with baking, etc. Ultimately, cooking is a series of small experiments where you have to learn what happens when you combine a variety of ingredients in a multitude of ways. The stronger your understanding of why things happen in a recipe, the more likely your end product is going to taste amazing. Cooking also provides a fun and applicable way to explore the science curriculum in a variety of areas, liquids and solids, plant growth, food preservation methods like drying, smoking, fermenting, freezing, curing, etc. There's so much to do with connecting science in the school curriculum. Some other areas, soil health, studying ecosystems, plant growth, water cycles, global climate patterns, all have significant roles in agriculture, food production, and our entire food system. Social studies, though, offers many opportunities to explore how food plays an important role in shaping our economies, our workforce, and our communities in general. Understanding where ingredients are sourced from or where cooking techniques and terminology originated from helps to develop an understanding of how our food system works. Learning about the impact of our food system on the environment and how we as individuals can impact and change the system can help us work towards a sustainable food future. And learning how different cultures around the world rely on their local food systems for survival and how their access or lack thereof of food shapes their cultures, communities, and day-to-day -day lives. Food provides a means to understand how societies of the past survived and thrived. It also provides a means to learn about and appreciate different cultures from all over the world. And finally, even in art, basic art concepts in plating and food photography can help bring in appreciation for the art of food presentation and build good food attitudes. The history of early painters who would make paints out of tea and berries, beets and other plants can also help to build a deeper understanding of how food has shaped so many aspects of people's lives throughout history. And that's just a very quick overview of some of the ways that food literacy and the curriculum can overlap and ultimately can work hand in hand. One final thought to end this video. School and classroom activities involving food and cooking help to build food literacy skills and help children develop healthy relationships with their food. As an added bonus, food is inherently exciting for children to explore, and using food as a vehicle to present various subjects in different ways is generally really fun for children and has proven to be quite effective too. In the next video, we'll begin talking about introducing children to new foods and positive approaches to helping children taste new foods. Can't wait to see you then. Thanks for joining us.